Hi, hello and welcome to Journey Towards Wealth. In today's video, we are going to discuss about how to budget if you are a beginner. Recently, I received a mail or I received an email where somebody had said that they are new to budgeting and they find it very difficult to actually start off with the budgeting journey. That's when it struck me that there may be many out there who may find it difficult to start on with the budgeting journey. So in this video, we are going to discuss what exactly is a budget and how can a beginner without being overwhelmed, without being worried, without being hesitant, start your budgeting journey. I know budgeting, especially once you're starting it afresh, is not a great state to be in because where your spending was without any restriction, once you start budgeting, you will start having restrictions in your spending because you realize how much money has been unwantedly spent. But again, in the long run, that would give you a very positive result. So before we go into detail, there are certain points that you need to keep in mind before you start your budgeting journey. First and foremost, if you are single, then it becomes easier for you to start with budgeting because you just have to worry about yourself and your income and your expenses. But if you're married and just started your journey in your marital relationship, so budgeting can be a spoiler in your relationship because if you are the one who takes up the effort of budgeting, the other party may not accept budgeting as such because budgeting is considered to be a restriction in life. So you have to be very tactful to convince other party to get along with you for the budgeting journey. A budgeting journey without both the partners being part of it cannot be successful because it is your income which is a combined income of both the parties if both of you are working and again expenses. One person alone cannot cut the expenses. It has to be you need to know both your expenses and then only you can look at how to cut or reduce the expenses if it is unwanted expenses. So it's very important that both the partners are on the same page when it comes to budgeting. If one person is interested to do with the budgeting journey but the other person may not be interested, then it can bring a conflict in your relationship and you need to tackle that very carefully. Then before you go into budgeting, one thing you need to understand is once you understand what your, your monthly expenses is, the first and foremost thing that you need to do is to keep aside amount as emergency fund. Initially, when you start, you may need an emergency fund of three to six months. So now you have understood the basic understanding that you should have before you start your budgeting journey. Now let's understand what is a budget. Budget is nothing but an estimate of your income and expenses over a period of time. It might sound surprising, but we, I have seen many people who do not have a fair idea of how much their spouse is earning or they do not have an idea about what are their sources of income. They may not have an idea about many expenses where the husband or the wife must be doing. These are all things which are not right when it comes to budgeting. Budgeting requires you to have a clarity of all your incomes, whether it's a salary made by the spouse, the husband, the wife, then it is an interest income that comes in, rental income, a dividend income. I've heard many people saying that we are not very interested to discuss about money. Fine. You don't need to discuss with anybody else, but you need to discuss with your own family, with your spouse, because it is important that they understand what their incomes are so that the expenses can be adjusted accordingly. I have seen many families where the wife is not aware about the financial crunch the husband is going through because the husband finds it difficult to inform the wife that there is a financial problem happening. All this happens because there is no communication about money in the family. There is no understanding about money in the family. Money can be a good servant, but it cannot be a good master. Hence, it becomes very important for you to allocate your money or decide where you're going to spend your money. 
and not just leave your money like that many people find it a waste of effort to actually allocate their money for different things but believe me the long run impact is huge once you have budget in place now the first step before you set a budget is to understand the various income as a family you are getting it could be the salary of the husband and wife it could be a rental income it could be a dividend income it could be an interest income or it could be any uh, you know income that you, you receive so first and foremost before you start the budgeting journey is to have an estimate of your income from various sources the second is to have an estimate of your expenses that too if possible the smallest of expenses if you can get a clarity on that that would be the best thing because then you understand where your money is going so it becomes very important as a family you have a fair idea about your income and your expenses again when it comes to expenses it is not easy for you to have the fair idea in a month or two i would suggest you to actually literally write down your expenses on a piece of paper or on excel for at least 3 to 6 months and then you will get a fair idea about what your expenses are and once you start tracking your expenses the next important step is to identify the expenses which you see are or which you notice are unwanted i mean when we started the investing journey before we started the investing journey we first started off with budgeting and what happened is we realized there was so much of you know double expenses happening and we were actually when i we initially started off we used to buy yogurt from the shop and those days maybe 10 years back that wasn't as cheap as it was today it was much more expensive and we were actually spending almost five times of the money to buy yogurt whereas we could have made that yogurt at home by one fifth price once we started writing expenses we realized at simple simple expenses adds up to your total spending so once you start writing down your expenses that too there are expenses which happens daily maybe a cup of coffee here maybe a snack there it's difficult to track to his expense but budgeting it would be great if you could actually track those expenses there could be a weekly expenses like your eating out your grocery shopping or uh, your uh, weekend fun activity those are the your weekly expenses and there will be monthly expenses like your utility bill your rental bill then your um, bills for your you know telephone your uh, credit card bills those are the monthly expenses so it's important for you to actually understand your various expenses daily weekly monthly so that you have a fair idea of your total expenses now after you know understanding your expenses over a period of time for 3 to 6 months now you would have already realized those expenses which are in unnecessary and you would have already cut on those expenses now comes the next question generally people do not understand the difference between needs and wants they always think that everything they buy are their needs but it's not that for example when you're buying a car car today is a necessity everybody needs it for moving or a two wheeler is a necessity for that you just need a basic car you may need just a maruti or alto or any simple car is sufficient but what happens is people buy bigger cars like a suv sedan or maybe something like a bmw mercedes benz and assume that it's a need but it's not a need it's a want so this is the point where you need to really understand the difference between your need and want need of a car is to take you from a point a to point b but your want is to have a premium car so that you show your richness or your uh, ability to buy a bigger car to the world so it is important for you to actually understand the difference between need need is something that you cannot live without i wouldn't even say that car is a need as such but i'm just giving you it an example when you look at it from food basic food is what you really need but when you go to the next level people buy 
you know organic food expensive food that is actually your want that is not your need your need is just a basic food that is the difference between need and want need is something that you cannot live without it is very important but again for each family the needs are different for us our family travel is a need for us why because it gives us the required amount of you know um, relaxation that we need and we treat it as a need but for most families that may not be your need so you need to understand what's important for your family and then understand the difference between need and want need is something as a family as a, a couple you cannot live without that is very important for the well being of your family and want is something which is for your desire your aspirations those are your wants so it is important for you to separate between your needs and wants this will help you to actually control your expense to a large extent another thing what happens is many people have something called as impulse buying they go to a mall they go to a shopping center they see that they feel oh this is something i need this is something i uh, wish i had and they just in an impulse buy the thing that is another thing to be watched out when you're budgeting so how can you avoid that kind of impulse buy so whenever you go shopping you should have a list of things that you need to buy for anything outside that list you should give time you should think about whether you really need it then if you really feel you need it and you cannot live without it then come back maybe after 10 days or after 2 weeks and still if you are uh, you know inter- you are keen to buy the same way you were keen in the first time that is when maybe it's not an impulse buy it's something that you need or want so it's important that whenever there is a trigger to have an impulse buying you kind of avoid it for 10 days to 2 weeks and then take your final decisions again when you do online shopping many a times you get into the amazon website you get into mintra website what you realize is everything looks interesting and fascinating they are available at good discounts and you will feel like buying them but what you can do is you keep it in your shopping cart for couple of days maybe 10 days or 15 days then what you realize is after couple of days you might even forget about that item and you may never need that item so these are simple tricks that you can do to avoid impulse buying or uh, you know avoid unnecessary spending money once you're clear on your income and expenses and once you have reached a level of expense which you feel is uh, you know consistent or which has been going on for couple of months and you're sure that your monthly expenses will not go beyond a particular number the third area to focus is on your uh, investments savings and debt repayment why is this area important most people in their 20s and 30s assume that you know their life will continue like this but they ignore the fact that they will have a life where they would get old and a life where they will not be earning anything and they have to take care of that life with whatever you are currently earning hence it becomes very important that first you focus on repaying your loan because the biggest uh you know hindrance to create wealth is the loans that you have so you should try and repay those loans then you should focus on your savings and investments if you do not have heavy loans or if you just have a mortgage ha- happening then you can actually take your savings and investments along with your mortgages so it is important for you to actually start with your investment at earlier age so that you get a longer time for your money to actually compound another thing which cannot be ignored is your emergency fund before you start with any investments and savings it is advisable if you are in early years of your life to have at least 3 to 6 months of your monthly expenses in emergency fund this amount will help you to actually go through any difficult situations or difficult times in your life so before you actually start the process of investment savings and debt clearance it is important to have an emergency fund to tackle difficult situations in your life 
then when it comes to investment many people are not clear what they are investing for what are their goals so it is important for you to first jot down the financial goals that you need to clear so that you have an idea about why you are investing and what are you uh, you know aiming for what are the interest rate that you are aiming for so there may be some goals which may be short term that is you may want to look at uh, going for a vacation which is a short term goal and hence you cannot invest that in risky assets or assets which need times to time to compound whereas if you're looking for your retirement your kids education or higher education which is a future goal you can look at investing in the stock market or uh, you know any area where there is a little bit of risk but which can give you some leverage in terms of time so it is very important that you identify your goals so that you can make your investment decisions accordingly now since you have your investment plan in place what since you have your goals in place it is important that you have a plan on how to actually allocate the monthly money that you are investing towards each of this dis- different goals so it, it important that you have a plan in place of how to allocate this money and not just at random make the investments this will help you to achieve your goals in a much faster pace again once you have realized the various uh, you know steps of budgeting now we have in, in depth gone through the various steps needed in budgeting now we need to understand what are the different types of budgets available which you can follow we can have a detailed video later on regarding your investments towards each financial goals or how to allocate financial goals in this video we will look at one type of budgeting which is most common or which is mostly followed by people and then we will go in detail towards other type of budgeting in the next videos the first set of budgeting or the first type of budgeting is called 50 30 20 which means 50% of your total income will be allocated towards your needs 30% will be allocated to your wants and 20% will be allocated to your savings investment and debt repayment initially when you start off with budgeting you may not have an idea about how to allocate the money and this simple formula will become handy for you in that stage later on once you start feeling comfortable with it and you are comfortable to save a higher percentage then you can tweak this a bit and do it as 50% towards your needs 30% towards your savings investment and debt repayment and 20% towards your wants then the next is 40 30 20 10 which means 40% will be allocated towards your savings investment and debt repayment 30% towards your necessary expenses or your needs 20% towards your discretionary spending or your wants and 10% towards charity donations and all that This ten percent towards charity donation is a call which you need to take according to your situation. This forty, thirty, twenty, ten principle can be applied for people having high income or people who are keen on saving and investing a higher percentage of their income. This is not applicable for people who are in the starting phase because they may not be in a position to allocate such a high amount towards savings investment. So this is applicable if you are comfortable to allocate forty percent towards savings and investment, or it is for somebody who is looking for an early retirement or financial independence. The next is seventy twenty ten. This is seventy percent is towards your living expenses, twenty percent towards your savings investment and debt repayment, and ten percent towards your fund money or discretionary spending. Again, this is suitable for people. who are having to who have to spend higher amount towards their needs or their living expenses and they are ready to cut on their discretionary spending or their wants but in this case also we ensure that 20% is allocated towards savings and investment where you will be able to actually accumulate a good corpus over a period of time another version of the 70 20 is 80 20 where 80 percent is allocated towards your expenses we do not 
differentiate between your needs and wants in this particular calculation and 20% would be allocated towards your savings, investments and debt repayment. The next is 60-20-20 where 60% will be allocated towards your needs, 20% towards your wants and 20% towards your financial goals which is your savings, your investment and debt repayment. So now these are the various percentages in which you can allocate your income towards your expenses and your financial goals. Again, there is no one fit for all principle which works for everybody. You need to understand your individual situation and tweak these numbers according to your requirement. Whatever or whichever you choose, you will be able to save at least 20% of your monthly income and that would be sufficient for you to reach your financial independence. Again, you do not have to put in too much of stress and pressure on you and your spouse and your family to achieve a particular number or percentage. You need to take it easy and come up with a number that works for you. We have gone in detail about various steps in your budgeting journey. Also, we have discussed in detail about one step or one type of budgeting. In upcoming videos, we will discuss about more type of budgeting and also we will see how to actually put on a budget for your family. I hope this video is helpful for you. In case you find it helpful, please like, share and subscribe to this channel. Please put in your valuable comments in the comment box so that it motivates us to put in more videos like this. Thank you all for your time.